Hare Krishna. Thank you for joining this morning. Welcome class and thank you, Chapa. Last Travi Association. So we've been talking about uh, Lord Varadev for the last couple of weeks, how he appeared, and then the praise by the sages and Lord Brahma to Varadev. Now it's mentioned here that uh, Shukadev Goswami said, he was telling a story about uh, uh, Sage Maitri and Vidur. So there's so many stories within the stories. Um, after hearing from the great Sage Maitri about the Lord's incarnation as Vara, Vidur, who had taken a vow. So there's still this conversation going on between Vidur and uh, Maitri Muni. Incarnation as Vara, Vidur, who had taken a vow, begged him with folded hands to please narrate further transcendental activities of the Lord, since Vidu did not yet feel satisfied. So the, the story continues uh, after the, now we discuss the, the appearance of Lord Varadev. So I suppose he wants to know why did Varadev appear, what actually happened. So Sri Vidu said, Oh, chief amongst the great sages, I have heard by disbelief succession that Hiranyaksha, so he knew, he knew the story, the original demon was slain by the same form of sacrifices, the personality of Godhead, the Lord Bow. So we mentioned last week that the Bow incarnation was manifested in two millenniums, namely Swayam Bhuva and Chakshusha Manu. In both millenniums, there was a Bow incarnation of the Lord. <clears throat> but in the Swam Bhuva uh, millennium, he leaped in the earth from within the water of the universe, whereas in the Chakshusha millennium, he killed the first demon, Hiranaksha. In the Swam Bhuva millennium, he assumed the color white, and in the Chakshusha millennium, he assumed the color red. Vidur had already heard about one of them, and he proposed to hear about the other. So the two different bow incarnations described are the one supreme personality called head. So they, uh, we always think there's one uh, incarnation. Actually, there's two different incarnations or two different millenniums. The sun was setting and the sage was sitting in trance of, uh, offering oblations to the supreme personality God in Vishnu, whose tongue is the sacrificial fire. So fire is considered to be the tongue of the personality of God and Vishnu. <clears throat> as we discussed before, and oblations of grains and clarified butter offered to the fire are thus accepted by him. That is the principle of all sacrifices of which Lord Vishnu is the master. In other words, the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu includes the satisfaction of all demigods and all other living beings. Let's do a quick prayer. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kruti Vasanam Pangum Lam Yati Girin Yatkir Pata Hom and the Shri Guru Di Dharanam Pramananda Madhu Chitaneshram Ari Om Dasat Narayan Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Saswati Vyasam Totojem Udiriyet Nasta Presha Vadareshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nishtaki Hare Krishna. So now the story has been narrated how Hiranaksha actually came about. So it's mentioned in that place the beautiful Diti expressed her desire. O oh, learned one, Cupid is taking his arrows and distressing me possibly as a mad elephant troubles a banana tree. So this is uh, Diti and uh, Kashyap Muni, <clears throat> her husband. Therefore, he should be kind towards me by showing me complete mercy. I desire to have sons and I am much distressed by seeing the opulence of my co-wives because they all had sons and she didn't have any sons. By performing this act, you will become happy. Since she had no sons, she felt poorer than her co-wives. Therefore, Kashyap Muni was supposed to satisfy his 
bona fide wife. In fact, the co-wives were her own sisters. Uh, well-wishing father, Daksh, after knowing her attentions, handed over 13 of his daughters onto you. And since then, we have all been faithful. Oh, hero, Vidur. Oh, hero, uh, says, um, let me explain to Vidur. Diti being thus afflicted by the contamination of lust and therefore poor and talkative was specified by the son of Merici in suitable words. So Kashyap Muni tries to pacify her because he's, he's busy, isn't it? He's doing his worship. When a man or a woman is afflicted by the lust, it is, it is to be understood that as sinful contamination. So Sri Prabhupada explains, Kashyap was engaged in his spiritual activities, but he didn't have sufficient strength to refuse his wife, who was thus afflicted. He could have refused her with strong words, expressing impossibility, but he was not as spiritually strong as Vidur. Vidur is addressed here as a hero because no one is stronger in self-control than a devotee of the Lord. It appears that Kashyap was already inclined to have enjoyment with his wife, and because he was not a strong man, he tried to dissuade her only with pacifying words. So he you know, is being very sweet and gentle to her, whereas she's asking for the impossible and there's gonna be a lot of problems uh, if this uh, goes ahead, but yet he doesn't seem to be too concerned about it. You know, like they say, you see in the movie say, Asambhav, you know, they're like impossible, cannot be done but he was not like that. He's just being very gentle or too gentle with her, uh, with her ridiculous request uh, because of the timing. And in fact, I mean, he had 13 wives and still, still no control over his uh, lust as well. Physically, he must be strong, but mentally, maybe not so strong. So, you yeah. know. What chance have we got? Um, these um, sages, you know, exalted sages, the 13 wives don't have control over themselves. So, as one can cross, the Krishamuni continues, as one can cross over the ocean with seagoing vessels, one can cross the dangerous situation of the material ocean by living with a wife. So, he is saying, you know, how great uh, a wife is, which are, you know, he shouldn't really be complimenting her at this time. He should be just telling her off that, uh, you know, you're asking ridiculous request. So please behave. There are four social orders for cooperation in the endeavor for liberation from material existence. The orders of brahmacharya or pious student life, household life with a wife, retired life and a renounced life. All depend for successful adv advancement on the householder who lives with a wife. So the other, the brahmacharya, the student and the sannyasi, they're, they're all relying on the householder because he's the only one who's earning. This cooperation is essential for the proper function of the institution of the four social orders and the four spiritual orders of life. This Vedic Varnashma system is generally known as the caste system. The man who lives with the wife has a great responsibility in maintaining the members of the other social orders. This Vedic Varnashma system is generally known as the caste system. And uh, the man who lives with his wife has a great responsibility in maintaining the members of the other social orders, like the Brahmacharis, one Prastas, Sanyasis. Except for the Grastas or the other householders, everyone is supposed to engage in the spiritual advancement of life. Whereas the Grasta, he has to do both. He has to advance in spiritual life and maintain the other orders as well. So therefore the Brahmachari, Manprastha and Sanyasi have very little time to earn a livelihood because they are full-time devoted to their spiritual life. They therefore collect arms from the Christas and thus they secure the bare necessities of life and cultivate spiritual understanding. Now by helping the other three sections of society cultivate spiritual values, the householder also makes advancement in spiritual life. So you, you make your advancement by helping the other three, but at the same time, you have your own sadhana as well. 
ultimately every member of society automatically becomes spiritually advanced and easily crosses the ocean of nescience. So as well as helping these uh, three other orders, we, we also have to have sadhana, we also have to have a, a follow Vedic principles, religious principles as well. It's not that we can do whatever we want as long as we provide something for the other three ashramas. No, we have to follow the principles as well if you we want to advance. Oh, respectful one, a wife is so helpful that she's called the better half of a man's body because of her sharing in all auspicious activities. A man can move without anxiety, entrusting all responsibilities to his wife. So this is Kashamani <laughs> complimenting his wife, telling her how great she is and how great the, the, wife, uh, the wives are. By the Vedic injunction, the wife is accepted as the better half of man's body because she's supposed to be responsible for discharging half of the duties of the husband. A family man has a responsibility to perform five kinds of sacrifices called Panch Yagya in order to get relief from all kinds of unavoidable sinful reaction incurred in the course of his affairs. When a man becomes qualitatively like the cats and dogs, he forgets his duties in cultivating spiritual values and thus he accepts his wife as a sense gratificatory agency. So when the wife is accepted as a sense gratificatory agency, Personal beauty is the main consideration, and as soon as there is a break in personal sense gratification, there is a dis disruption or divorce. So if you just after sense gratification from the wife, <coughs> then uh, you know, you're happy as long as you're attracted to each other, and when there's no attraction, then things go wrong. But uh, it's mentioned that the husband wife relationship goes beyond just sense of gratification. They help each other to advance in spiritual life. That's the main reason why we get married. But when husband and wife aim at spiritual advancement by mutual cooperation, there is no consideration of personal beauty or the disruption of so-called love. In the material world, there is no question of love. Marriage is actually a duty performed in mutual cooperation as directed in the authoritative scriptures by for spiritual advancement. So this is the main reason for getting married. Therefore, marriage is essential in order to avoid the life of cats and dogs who are not meant for spiritual enlightenment. So it's very nicely explained the meaning of marriage. We, we just think that it's for sense gratification and just having lots of kids. But yes, have children, but only if you can make them Krishna conscious. As a fourth commander very easily conquers invading plunderers by taking shelter of a wife, one can conquer the senses, which are unconquerable in the other social orders. <coughs> Excuse me. Of the four orders of human society, the student of the Brahmachari order, the householder or Grista order, the retired one Prasta order, and the renounced or Sanyasi order, the householder is on the safe side. Excuse me. The bodily senses are considered plunderers of the fort of the body. The wife is supposed to be the commander of the fort. And therefore, whenever there is an attack on the body by the senses, it is the wife who protects the body from being smashed. The demand is inevitable for everyone. She's the demand of lust. But when but one who has a fixed wife is saved from the onslaught of the sense enemies. A man who possesses a good wife does not create a disturbance in society. And without a fixed wife, a man becomes a departure of the first order and is a nuisance in society unless he is a trained brahmachari, manprastha or sannyasi. So if you are grista, <coughs> it's important to be in line uh, with, a, with, with your wife, make sure you know, you, there's cooperation between the wife and husband, otherwise there can be a lot of problems, not just for yourself, but for society as well. There's so many instances of fall down, even for great yogis like Vishwamitra, and Krista is saved, however, because of his faithful wife. 
So life, so this life between husband and wife can cause material bondage, and therefore it is prohibited in three ashramas and is allowed only in Grasta ashram. The Grasta is responsible for producing first quality brahmacharis, prastas and sannyasis. I mean, in fact, the children that are born of the Grasta husband and wife, they are the ones who go on to become brahmacharis, prastas and sannyasis. They, you know, one prastas, sannyasi, brahmacharis, they are somebody's children, right? So, Sri Prabhupada's sign is, if you're going to have children, then make sure you produce first-class children. Either they can be brahmacharis, manprastas, sannyasis, or they should be very good grasthas who can maintain these other three orders. O queen of the home, we are not able to act like you. This is like the men. We are not able to act like you, nor could we repay you for what you have done even if we worked for our entire life or even after death. To repay you is not possible, even for those who are admirers of personal qualities. So much glorification of a woman by husband indicates that he's at handpacked or he's talking lightly in joke. So, you know, he's, he's taking Vicky, basically. Kashyap meant that householders living with wives enjoy the heavenly blessings of sense enjoyment and at the same time, have no fear of going down to hell. The man in the renounced order of life has no wife and may be driven by the desire to seek another woman or another's wife and thus go to hell. In other words, the so-called man of the renounced order who has left his home and wife goes to hell if he again desires these pleasures, knowingly or unknowingly. So it's mentioned that the other orders are in a more uh, dangerous position than the Grasta, because Grasta has a wife, the others don't, and if they build that mentality somehow, have those desires, then they're likely to go to hell for that. In that way, the householders are on the side of safety. Therefore, husbands as a class cannot repay the debt to women, either in this life or in the next, even if they engage themselves in repaying the women throughout their whole lives. It is still not possible. Not all husbands are as able to appreciate the good qualities of their wives. But even though one is able to appreciate these qualities, it is still not possible to repay the debt to his wife. Such extraordinary praises by husband for his wife are certainly in the mode of joking. Sri Rupa says that uh, he's gone a little bit overboard with his compliments. Well, I mean, this is wrong because he should be telling her off for her request instead of he's just throwing compliment after compliment. <clears throat> Even though it is not possible to repay you, I shall satisfy your desire immediately for the sake of begetting children. But you must wait for only a few seconds so that others may not reproach me. So he is happy. He's still in his senses. He's saying, look, I can fulfill your request, but let's just wait for the right time. But She's not having any of this. And it's mentioned the hen pecked husband may not be able to repay his wife for all the benefits that he derives from her. But as for begetting children by fulfilling desires, it is not at all difficult for an husband unless he is thoroughly impotent. So he's not, not doing any big favors. This is a very easy task for a husband under normal conditions. In spite of Kashyap being very eager, he requested her to wait for a few moments or seconds so that the others might not reproach him. And he exp then explains why he's saying this. This particular time is most inauspicious because at this time, the horrible looking ghosts and constant companions of the Lord of the ghosts are visible. And then uh, it goes on to say about Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, the king of the ghosts, sitting on the back of his bull carrier travels at this time, accompanied by ghosts who follow him for their welfare. So Lord Shiva or Rudra, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, is the king of the ghosts. Ghostly characters worship Lord Shiva to be gradually guided toward a path of self-realization. Ghosts are bereft of physical body because of their grievously sinful acts, such as suicide. So anyone who commits suicide becomes a ghost because they have, uh, had an untimely death. And then 
some people uh, take suicide as an option, thinking you know we can get our out of our miseries, of our problems. But in fact, by committing suicide, you get yourself entangled in bigger problems, and which you can't get out of. And uh, so it's not a better option. It's actually it's a worse option. The last resort of the ghostly characters in human society is to take shelter of suicide, either material or spiritual. Material suicide causes loss of the physical body and spiritual suicide causes loss of individual identity. Mayavadi philosophers desire to lose their individuality and merge into the impersonal, spiritual Brahmjyoti existence. Lord Shiva, being very kind to the ghosts, says that although they are condemned, they get physical bodies. He places them into the wombs of women who indulge in these uh, acts, regardless of the restrictions on time and circumstance. So there's something for everybody. Even the ghosts, if when they become uh, devotees of Lord Shiva, he will place them in a, in a human body so they can get back on track again and do devotion service somehow and come back to Godhead. <clears throat> Kashyap wanted to impress this fact upon Diti so that she might wait for a while. Kashyap has already told his wife Diti to wait for a while, and now he warns her that failure to consider the particular time will result in punishment from the ghosts and evil spirits who move during this time along with their master, Lord Rudra. So she has been explained and it's mentioned later that Lord Shiva's body is reddish and he's unstained, but he's covered with ashes. His hair is dusty from the whirlwind dust of the burning crematorium. He is the younger brother of your husband, and he sees with his three eyes. Lord Shiva is not an already living entity, nor is he in the category of Vishnu. So he's very near to Vishnu, but not quite or the Supreme Person of Godhead. He is far more powerful than any living entity up to the standard of Brahma. <clears throat> Yet he is not an equal level with Vishnu. Since he is almost like Lord Vishnu, Shiva can see past, present and future. One of his eyes is like the sun, other is like the moon, and his third eye, which is between his eyebrows, is like fire. He can generate fire from his middle eye and he is able to vanquish and vanquish any powerful living entity, including Brahma, yet he does not pompously live in a nice house, etc. Or neither does he possess any material properties, although he's master of the material world. He lives in mostly in the crematorium where dead bodies are burned, and the whirlwind dust of the crematorium is his bodily dress. He's unstained by material contamination. Kashyap took him as his younger brother because the younger sister of Diti was married to Lord Shiva. <clears throat> the husband of one sister is considered one's brother. By that social relationship, Lord Shiva happened to be the younger brother of Kashyap. Kashyap warned his wife that because Lord Shiva would see their intelligence, the time was not appropriate. Diti might argue that they would enjoy a, in a private place, but Kashyap reminded her that Lord Shiva has three eyes called the sun, moon, and fire, and one cannot escape his vigilance any more than one can escape Vishnu. Although seen by the police, a criminal is sometimes not immediately punished. The police wait for the proper time to apprehend him. The forbidden time for this indulgence would be noted by Lord Shiva, and Diti would meet with proper punishment by giving birth to a child of ghostly character or a godless impersonalist. So Kashyap Muni foresaw this and he warned his wife, Diti. <clears throat> so this is what happened. This is where the demons started being produced. And, and uh, we'll go on to this further in part two next Friday. So thank you so much. Uh, please uh, give your input. And uh, <clears throat> who shall we start with? Okay, we lost Dipti Mataji. Uh, okay, Jay Prabhu, would you like to start? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Uri. Uh, yeah, um, this, this ch chapter is about, you know, the main character is Dipti. So, who, who is Dipti? Um, she is the daughter of Daksa and the wife of 
because she had her only and also she was a uh, sister of Sati who was the wife of Lord Shiva so um I think uh, Dak, uh, Daksa had thought that, that um so 13 daughters of Daksa were married to Kashyapu so um she was Diti was one of them so and the story the story of Diti explains her, her pregnancy explains why Lord would have appeared so um so other topics in this chapter include you know uh, results of hearing about the Lord's pastimes um uh, about household life and how the wife should support the husband um also you know a lot of details about Lord Shiv and goes on to Prahlad Maharaj which we'll probably cover next week so after hearing about the Lord's incarnation of Varaha Vidura wanted to know more about, you know for the reason for the fight between the demon Hiranyaksha and Lord Bull so because the inquiries uh, by Vidura concerned the Lord that they were perfect perfectly befit mm-hmm befitting for a devotee a devotee who has no taste for hearing about among anything on a, a devotee has no taste for hearing about anything on vain and like one who takes delight in hearing about the topics of the lord is relieved from the chain of um birth and death so so this really on a particular evening you know wanted wanted them to get her pregnant uh, as you decide to have a child so she described the way she was feeling by saying that um Cupid is taking his arrows and distressing me forcibly so at, at the time she asked the sun was setting and husband who was a great sage was sitting in a trance after having offered his oblations to Vishnu so the, uh, as I think you mentioned, Diti had no sons and, and the other co-wives did, so therefore it's right for her husband to s- satisfy his wife to fulfill her desire to have sons. And I think on husband and wife, and the wife, how the wife should support their husbands. For a conditioned soul, the wife is considered to be the source of liberation. A faithful wife is supposed to cooperate with her husband in fulfilling his material desires so that he can become comfortable and execute spiritual activities for the perfection of life. Both the wife and husband will then profit in spiritual advancement. So, so, so by taking shelves for the wife, uh, you know, uh, husband in household life can conquer their senses, which are unconquerable in other uh, social orders because there's a, there's a danger of falling falling down to hell. So, um, uh, Keshepu fulfilled his wife's de- desires. Even though the timing was in- inauspicious, he knew that Lord Shiva would not be pleased with him. But the forb- forbidden that at a time when ghosts and evil spirits were present, he knew that the child conceived would certainly not be a good child. So I think you mentioned a lot, lot of things by Lord Sh- about Lord Shiva. So, so Lord Shiva is king of ghosts and Ghastly characters worship him to be gradually guided towards a path of self realization. You mentioned what ghosts, ghosts were, and all. Um, so, you know, if you commit suicide uh, or, or sin for lack, um, you get a ghastly body. And uh, as a Lord Shiva's body is described as reddish, reddish in color with ashes. Um, so, He's the most powerful living entity in the material world, but he's not equal on level with Vishnu. He's he's called Mahadev, or the greatest of the demigods. So his Lord Shiva is also the greatest devotee of the Supreme Person of God in Krishna. Um, um, so, um, I think we'll probably we'll continue with it next week, so I'll leave it there, I think, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhu. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Rukmini Madhaji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Madhaji. Lord Shiva was the brother of Akashyap, no? Hey, well, according to this, he was like his brother-in-law, like Sandhu, you know? The oh. both married to sisters. 
but he considered him like his brother uh -huh. he was not uh, strong spiritually 13 wives <laughs> think, uh... <laughs> all these dev de devas we i can understand anything about this but it's all krishna's um, krishna's plan lord krishna's plan and that's how the earth uh, that's how it was working it's very confusing for me yeah it is uh, it is mataji yeah it's uh, like i say it is uh, quite because uh, like he has 13 wives yet he's not able to resist the you know the temptation um even though he knows it's wrong thing to do he still goes ahead so yeah it, for us it's very very difficult to understand uh, you know how all this works i mean you, you would think somebody in that caliber has more resistance and is able to okay he has to be gentle to his wife but you know if she's totally wrong then he has to as they say put your foot down sometimes because there's going to be a big disaster not for just for yourself it's going to be a big disaster for the, the rest of humanity as well and you have to do the right thing but uh, yeah it's, um, it's very difficult for us to understand but one thing we have to understand from this is that how we how things are misused there's everything has its place and its purpose but how everything is misused in society. Uh, we have the intelligence to do the right thing. So some things we understand, the, the things we don't understand, we can find in the scriptures, the how things should be done properly. Husband and wife have uh, this, the marriage as mentioned so elaborately that they have, they have a, there's a reason for getting married and they can make so much, they can be so useful to society by getting married, but yet, or we causes havoc uh, sometimes by creating the wrong kind of children who go around causing problems for everybody else. Yeah, so it's it's very important. Things are done. We understand how things are done properly, and we implement them properly, and then we can benefit everybody uh, and benefit ourselves as well spiritually. So yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much, Mantari. Thank you, Prabhuji. Okay, uh, Partha Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Nice Hare. class. Um, actually, again, you covered and Jay Prabhu covered a complete uh, thing. Uh, I think on, on, the, on the Mataji's point, like Daksha, um, Kashapa marrying 13 daughters, I think it is it is not by his wish. It is Daksha, Daksha actually got 60 daughters and he gave away, gave away his daughters to um, on the all great people. So it is not his own desire that he want to marry 13, 13 wives. He want to get 13 wives. And I, that is what I think. And, and the small thing is like, uh, like if you have a saving no Prabhu, like cat, it closes its eyes and thinks that nobody is watching him or her. Um, so that is what like here it is told that for everything there is an auspicious time. So don't think that you can escape and do do things of your choice in a, in a remote place or secluded place. Uh, so there is somebody watching. Lord, Lord exists in many forms. It's not that he's not here or he's not there. He's everywhere. So that's why we follow auspicious times to do any uh, auspicious activities anyhow. Um, yeah, that much only, Prabhuji. Sure, sure. Yeah, Prabhuji, yeah. It, it is mentioned that it was the desires of the sisters that, that they wanted to marry. Uh, um, uh, Lord Kashyap um, Muni. Okay. So, yeah, he mentioned like that. You're right. Uh, maybe the, they wanted to marry him, so he agreed. And you can see he he he, he finds it hard to say no anyway <laughs> from, from the whole episode. So oh. yeah, he he agreed to get married to all of them. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay, uh, Praveen Madhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam. Yeah, what I understand is like everything is taught by examples, by like, so this is a way to teach, you know, common people. So what is the right thing to do? Yeah. So although Diti, she was, if she had the power to hold the pregnancy for that long, so she wasn't like an ordinary person, so that she had the desire at the wrong time. So it is just, I think, 
to set an example, but it's a shame that there aren't any guidelines, what I'm thinking, because, well, I wasn't aware of anything like that, or no, like common people, they're not aware. So there should be guidelines because like, when my daughter's marriage broke down, I'm not blaming the guy, but he didn't know anything. Whereas like my daughter, she had a bit of sun scars, you know? So I always, then I thought there should be some sort of arrangement where like, when like two people are getting together, there should be guidelines, they should be taught what is the right thing to do, you know, and, and to do like about the children and everything. So I think there is a lack in a thing, then I think that should be addressed really, you know. So there should be some sort of, I think it is done in Krishna consciousness because I came across something. And yeah, I think that sort of guidance should be, some guidelines should be there because everybody's not reading Bhagavatam. And then that will help, you know, not to have all these demoniac personalities taking birth really. So that will help. A very good point. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, Shabrishi Mataji. Hare Krishna, everybody. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Well, DT, has been said, DT was the one of the daughter of Prajapati. He may, all the daughters were married to Kashyap when he accept one, and that it was Tati, and then she was she was married to Lord Shiva. Yeah. And um, uh, this um, uh, Kashyap and Lord Shiva, they were all were the, um, they are um, sons of Brahma. That's why they become they can call them brothers as well. And Diti's Deity, desire was Lord Krishna's desire. It was Krishna's desire for Diti to approach her husband at the wrong time. And because Krishna wanted his sons, uh, his door people, Jay and Vijay, to be as de born as demons, Hiranaksha and Hiranda Kachup <coughs> and Kaishap Muni. But Diti was blamed because it was desire of Krishna. And then it became the desire of Diti, so, but it was Diti was blamed for approaching that, that particular time. Just like in Ramayana, mantra was desire was Lord Ram's desire. He wanted to go to the forest to fulfill the desire of his devotee. But mantra was, bl bl was blamed for Lord Ram's departure to the forest. And uh, there is a particular time to do everything, like in the morning, uh, when he, in the, especially the Brahma Muhammad. And that time is to pray. And because they say the demigods, they move around that time. And, um, and at dusk, the ghost of evil spirit of Lord Shiva, they move about. And Lord Shiva, He's, he's as good as um, Lord Vishnu, as you mentioned before. He's got all the qualities, but he's not Vishnu. He's not all the qualities, but near enough. It's like Prabhupada said in the purpose many times, the difference between Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu is just like milk and yogurt. Yogurt is made of milk, but it's not milk. It's a little bit different. And after approaching Kashyap Muni, Diti lamented. She knew what he, she done some mistake. And Kashyap Muni consoled her by saying that she'll have a, at least she'll have a grandson who will be a devotee of Krishna. And the symptoms of a pure devotee um, will be Pralama, that uh, he'll be always, the, they'll be happy for the Zulf and distraught for others when they are in difficulty. They have no enemies. They don't lament or desire for anything. When Diti had that, that at least, uh, apart from my two sons who will be given, my, I'll have a grandson who will be a devotee. So she was very happy to hear 
that her grandson will be true devotee of Lord Krishna and that his sons, Hinnashya and Hinnakashyup, at least they'll be killed by Lord Krishna and not by the Brahmanas. And by, by the mercy of Krishna or pure devotee, one has a taste of hearing Krishna Katha and not hearing mundane, mundane topic. And we always pray to Supreme Lord in our prayers for blessing or so, everything we want or to glorify them. And uh, I was reading Bhakti Bhagavatam and I came across a very nice paper about the prayer by Prabhupada. And uh, it says, by glorifying the Lord with exalted verses, one becomes purified. We not only ask him blessing, but when we pray, we get purified as well. Although we are unable to offer prayers to the Lord as an adequate question, our duty is to make the attempts in order to purify ourselves. It is not that we should stop our glorification because demigods gods like Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot adequately glorify the Lord. It says that if they, they say they can't glorify because there is exalted position, don't think that they are like because they can't glorify, you can't glorify. Rather, as stated by Prahlad Maharaj, that everybody should glorify the Lord according to his own ability. Everybody got different ability. Everybody is not the same. If we are serious and sincere devotees, the Lord will give us intelligence to offer prayers properly. So if you are sincere, you're just thinking, I'm praying to God, that Krishna will help you. He'll give you intelligence to pray. Hare Krishna. Jay Prabhu asking, what are the exact times? When is the in an auspicious time when the ghosts and spirits are around? Do you know the exact times? It's uh, it's between um, uh, uh, sun sunrise and sunset. That 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 that's the that, that time. It's in, in between. There's not that time that is now neither sun nor the um, sunset nor the sunrise. In in between. Okay, because uh, I think it's one and a half hours before sunrise is Brahmurit. Yes, sunrise is before before the sunrise is Brahmurit. Yeah. Mm. So that would that be an auspicious time? Yeah, it's auspicious time because they say the dem demigod they move around that time and they they give you intelligence and they bless you. But at that time, between sunset and sun, before the sunset, there's a period. This is nothing called nothing, just like uh, you call it amavas. There's when in amavas, there's there's darkness, no moon, nothing in between. So this is in between. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you, Madhuri. Hare Krishna. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you, Gitanjali Kashyap. Adhani. I don't know, you would like to add something? I don't know if you've got the drift of uh, the discussion because I know you came a little bit later on, uh, but would you like to say something, Madhuri? Yeah, okay. Right. Huh. Hanji Madhuri. Uh, thank you so much. Um... I'm sorry I joined a bit late, but I have got a drift of it and I really regret that I missed the first part of it now. <laughs> I wish um, I could hear it because there is a lot of um, discussion that I can relate to myself in the sense of uh, having gone through uh, quite a difficult uh, divorce and then uh, having a child you know, and things that like what I've heard is um, I was in a situation where um, I knew that having a child was not the right thing, but kind of how the family environment was. And uh, 
shouldering that responsibility throughout at least now for 16, 17 years has been quite hard work. So yes, thank you so much. Um, again, apologies for joining late, but uh, really enjoyed the discussions that happened after I joined. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Madhuri. Main thing is now whatever happens in life is to chant the holy name because the holy name carries all the potencies. Krishna has put all the potency in his holy name and takes care of everything, takes care of our lives. Uh, so please chant as much as you can. And then Krishna arranges everything for our benefit. Thank you so much. And uh, also, Mataji, there are recordings, so you will be able to hear back. So Prabhuji always post the recordings. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Prabhu, uh, we haven't had the recordings for the last two weeks. So are, are they continually screwed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning because I hadn't, because I, I wasn't sure that uh, if anybody's taking notes or they listening to it. I like I missed the last fifteen minutes uh, last week. So I mean, when you miss it, I mean, yeah. Sure. I yeah. think the la last week one I think got deleted uh, because I thought. Well, actually, I will ask that whether we have taken because uh, sometimes I have to leave for work and then we put it on the desktop. I will find a last. But the week before I have got, I will add that one and will add definitely add this one as well. And uh, Gitanjali Madhuri, if you want to give me. Uh, send me your number. I can add it to my group and then you can listen to okay. the recording because we normally put in the group. So you can check my number, Narayan Keshav. I should be on the ISKCON group. Are you on the ISKCON group, Madhuri? Uh, no, I'm not on that group. That's why I kept checking this group for recordings. Oh. But then I felt a bit... Uh, I oh. thought maybe I shouldn't be asking for them. Uh, but I'm happy to know that at least my search was good and they're not on this group and I've not missed anything. Okay, right. I'm going to put my uh, mobile number here in the group and then you can, you. you can message me your number and I can add you to the, sure. you. To the group. Thank you. I'll do that. Thank you. For this. Okay, we'll do a couple of rounds now. Uh, maybe uh, Rukmani Mataji can make a start today and then uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you. Jay Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shri Vasudeva Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare